Yeah, let me introduce myself. My, my name is Henson, um, co-founder and CEO of Feedback Quiz. And we help uh, Amazon sellers basically um, improve and manage their brand reputation. So we can help you guys get more reviews through emails. And we can help also help monitor uh, your products, your listing changes. And we have some new tools coming out this year. So um, I'll kind of talk about it at the end. Um, so for sellers that are already selling on Amazon, um, you know, obviously reviews is the most important thing because, you know, for a customer to buy your product, they first you need to rank high and then also you need to have good review rating. So it's more and more difficult these days to get reviews because, you know, obviously Amazon's cracking down on all the black hat stuff and, you know, all the strategies that used to work, you know, years ago, no longer work anymore. So um, these days, a lot of people use, um, you know, outside sources, chatbots, whatever. Uh, what we focus on really is using automated software to help you guys get reviews through emails. And before I get into that, um, you know, a lot of sellers use this thing called Amazon Early Review Program. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with this, but for the ones that aren't familiar, just really quick, um, Basically, Amazon will find some reviewers to help review your products to get started. So usually listings that have very like brand new listings that you just launched that have very or low, no reviews, um, you can submit into this program and it costs $60 per SKU, which can be a little expensive, but they will guarantee, um, you know, anywhere between one to five reviews but it's not necessarily always gonna be positive reviews, but most likely it's gonna be positive because these uh, reviewers are getting some compensation from Amazon. So in a way, it's kind of like they're incentivizing the review. We're not allowed to do it, but it's their platform, they can do it. So we do recommend people that are launching new products to use this program just to get a few reviews. And usually we do see a high amount of positive reviews. So, um, the only downside really is the money, the cost could be high, and there's no guarantee the first review will be positive. So imagine if you just launched a product, your first review is a negative review, uh, you're gonna need three or four positive reviews to kind of cancel that out to get a you know a four star rating. So there is some downsides to it. And then sometimes it could take two or three months before you get any reviews. So those are the drawbacks. However, uh, it is through Amazon, so we do recommend you uh, sign up for this program to get the early reviews. Now, uh, before I actually get into um, sending emails or using review request button, there's a lot of things that have been happening in Amazon in the last uh, three, four months. And one of the biggest things really is that they're really enforcing their uh, terms of service or seller communication guidelines. A lot of sellers are not aware of what's going on. Um, people have been sending emails in the past with you know, specific messages to try to uh, get product reviews and, you know, suggestive language or incentivizing them with coupons. So all this stuff basically has come to an end, meaning that um, before you can get away with it, now you can't. So Amazon has deployed um, some kind of algorithm that can actually detect what kind of messages you're sending out through buyer seller messaging. So if you're in violation of, um, some of these uh, terms of service, then Amazon will slap you with a 30 day uh, email suspension. So a lot of people have been getting slapped with this and they've been scared and they're like basically saying, oh, I can't send emails anymore. So I'll kind of go through, um, you know, some of the, the myths about sending emails. And there's also this new uh, review request button that came out. So I'll talk about that as well. So really high level terms of service guidelines Things you can't do, these are pretty obvious, like you never want to compensate or give them a exchange of product for review, never offer refunds if after the buyer leaves a review, can't ask them to change a review, um, you can't ask them to write a positive review, and you can't even ask them to contact you uh, if there's an issue in the same email as the product review request email. So they're really trying to neutralize uh, and level the playing field of getting genuine reviews from buyers now. So, um, and also the, one of the biggest things now is you can only send one email or one review request per order. So 
uh, back in the days, people would set up these sequences where they can send like multiple emails, different timings, things like that. Um, now you can't do that anymore. Um, and you don't want to, you actually don't want to send any links or attachments uh, outside like to your website or things like that. Those are also not allowed. So what can you do now is you really want to personalize your email in a friendly manner, right? You um, don't want to use any suggested language to ask for review and you can only send one email, request email or seller email per order, meaning you either combine them together or you send only one. You can't send one seller review request email, you can't send one uh, product review request email per order. So those are kind of the, the high level rules. Uh, I suggest you guys all read the buyer seller messaging in terms of uh, communication guidelines in general about what you can and can't do with buyer seller messaging. Um, so now, Many sellers are aware there's this new acquire product reviews using a review, request a review feature. So if you inside your orders page, you'll see there's a button here. Uh, you can actually um, request a review. So by pressing this button, basically Amazon will send out a product review request automatically and you don't have to do anything. It's just an automated email from Amazon. Uh, it's all, they all look the same. They have the same subject line and you know, it's gonna ask for both seller review and um, product review in the same email. So what are the pros of using this um, request review feature? Well, it's 100% compliant by Amazon. So you don't have to worry about, you know, drafting up a message or getting hit with any suspensions. Uh, you're not gonna get restricted. They actually prefer you use this method over using buyer, uh, seller, sorry, buyer uh, seller messaging now. Um, so you can avoid sending emails to buyers who've already left a feedback review since you know the button will disappear on its own if it happened. And it automatically also translate to buyers per, per, uh, preferred language. So for example, if you're selling in Europe or UK or Japan, uh, these customers are in, you know, read in different languages. So they will actually translate the template for you. So you don't have to create you know, specific uh, language templates. Now the cons of this button is that you know you can no longer you can't really customize it all. So you can't put in your logos, you can't do any branding, you can't tra track metrics like open rates. Buyers cannot respond if they have an issue or you know they have something to tell you, they can't respond to it. And it always sends both product review and seller feedback links in the same email. And one of the biggest cons of that is um, if you're an FBA seller or FBM seller, usually you're focused on either getting product reviews or seller reviews. And um, unlikely you're trying to get both, but some sellers do want to get both. However, the problem is if you send both uh, request links in the same email, most buyers are inclined to click on one of them. And once they click on one of them, leave a review or feedback, they're not going to go back to the email and click on the second line and do the same one because a lot of uh, buyers don't understand the difference between seller feedback and product reviews. So it's actually ideal to target only either seller review or product review and not to mingle them together. So that's one of the biggest cons of using the review request feature. Now using buyer seller messaging emails. Um, so a lot of people think you can't use this anymore. Uh, it's not true. Amazon still allows you to use um, buyer seller messaging to request reviews and seller feedback. Uh, however, the thing really you need to do is educate yourself and understand the communication guidelines on what you can send in the text and the content of the actual email you're sending out. So the biggest pros of using buyer seller messaging emails is fully customizable, right? So you can put in your logo, you can put in pictures, you can put in buttons. These are all going to help you uh, get higher conversions. And like Quinn said earlier, uh, a 1% increase in conversions is, is huge, right? Especially once you start growing your brand. If you're getting a thousand orders a day, you know, that one or 2% increase can really make a difference on uh, getting product reviews. Uh, you can customize your subject lines. So for example, um, you know, we usually use a subject line like regarding your Amazon order or something like that versus uh, Amazon will send an email that says, uh, can you rate your transaction or something like that. So the subject line really makes a big difference because the first thing that people read when they open their email as a subject line. The subject line determines if they want to open the email or not. Now, based on our studies, subject lines that are too direct um, that tell you exactly what the email content is about sometimes, people just tend to overlook and not actually open those emails. So you actually get lower open rates and lower conversions because of that. 
Now, if you can customize your subject line and, you know, not in a deceiving way, but in a way where it sounds like there's something important about the message where it's still regarding with Amazon, you will see much higher open rates. And that's why we always seen, you know, some of the subject lines that we A-B test, we get 40% open rates. And just because of the open rate, it actually transitioned to getting higher conversions, um, including personalized messages within Amazon communication guidelines. So like right now, um, you know, we're in a crisis right now. So, you know, asking for a review, you can throw in something about like, you know, we're here to support you through COVID-19, things like that. Like there's always uh, ways to create personalized emails that within uh, Amazon guidelines that, you know, can kind of bring a little bit of uh, personalization in um, between you and the buyer, right? Because once you build that connection, um, it really increases the chances of, of them, uh, you know, leaving your review. Um, attaching files or product instructions. So, you know, a lot of sellers don't realize that you can actually attach files. Uh, for example, like if you're selling a treadmill or some workout equipment and it requires uh, some kind of, you know, way to build it or exercises that you need to do. These are actually things that Amazon allows you to attach to um, your emails, which can really help your branding as well, because inside this attachment, of course, you're going to have your branding instructions. And this will also help cut down on negative reviews, because if they understand how to use your product, uh, they're generally going to have a more positive experience. So these are actually things you can attach using buyer sell messaging where you can't use uh, with a review request button. Of course, you can track open rates, uh, you can see, and then you can A-B test and change subject lines to help improve uh, conversions. Now, what are the biggest risk uh, cons right now? Well, the risk is now um, there's a restriction, right? You can possibly get restricted for sending emails if you don't understand the communication guidelines. If you put in suggestive language, you're asking them to leave a positive review, things like that. Amazon has algorithm, uh, they will stop you with that 30 day uh, restriction. So that's one thing that's, that's a con. Uh, risk of sending multiple request emails. Now, if you're doing this manually or using a software that doesn't have any type of uh, restrictions, it's very possible you could be sending duplicate emails or more than one request email and Amazon's gonna also hit you with that. The other thing is that uh, buyer name is no longer allowed. The API doesn't send the um, personal information anymore. So we can't you know, address you be like, hey, Quinn, or hey, Kamal, did. you know, we can't put that in there anymore. Whereas the um, the other review request button does have that. So those are the cons. Now, now you're asking which one should you use? Um, so, you know, sellers who want a peace of mind, 100% Amazon compliant email, they don't want to deal with the hassle of reading communication guidelines and making their own templates. Then the review request button option is probably the best for you, right? Now with buyer seller messaging, uh, these are people that are building brands, right? You have a logo, you want to throw in their email, you have you want to connect your customers with personalized message. Uh, you want to add product instructions, or um, you know, there's sellers that have specific selling big quantities of uh, goods that need delivery instructions or um, customization of a dog tag or something. This these actually requires the buyers to communicate with you. So this is where you would need to use buyer seller messaging, and there are ways to opt out and to get through to all the people. Uh, that buy your products using like the important tag, but those are considered critical messages and um, you have to really be careful on how you use that too. If you use it the wrong way, you can also get hit with restriction. So, um, so basic conclusion is that, you know, buyer seller messaging emails, customization emails are always going to give you um, higher conversions just because, um, you know, with the review request button, it's just kind of like the same as the feedback um, review, uh, the feedback request mechanism that Amazon sends to pretty much all your um, purchases. It's the same email, the same body, the same content, like everyone knows the same email. So after some time, people are just become insensitive to it and they're not gonna open those emails anymore. So that's what we've seen. We've seen that when they first launched this review request button, you know, the review uh, conversion rate was actually very high because this is something new, no one's seen it before. And they're like, oh, this is cool, check it out. But now it's like, everyone's getting the same email. I mean, I've been buying tons of stuff on eBay because of this and I, I mean, not eBay, but Amazon. And I'm getting these emails every day. And I, I honestly just stop opening them just because, you know, it's the same thing, right? But with customization, you can change it up. You have the ability to adapt, right, to things. So basically, don't be afraid of sending emails to your buyer messaging. You got to spend the time and effort to understand everything about uh, selling on Amazon, right? All the big companies, all the corporate brands, they're still using buyer-seller messaging to deliver messages, deliver order confirmation, things like that. 
Um, so take the time, uh, effort, build your brand logo, set up your email, set up your customization, and spend time to fully understand the Amazon Communication Guidelines. So just to give you a kind of an email comparison of what it looks like, well, this is kind of the, this is the Amazon product review email. So you guys probably seen this before. It's just, you know, they, they slap your um, uh, product name and then the, uh, the logo on here, and it basically has a, a unfilled star that you can click on, right? And with a uh, sample like uh, feedback for the product email. So we, we just try to make it similar, but you can really do anything you want, but this allows you to you know, put in your logo, you can make the picture bigger, you can even create a custom button, you can put in the same star button. So it just allows you more flexibility on what you wanna say. And this will definitely get you higher conversions. So now let's say you get the other topic I want to talk about was like responding to negative reviews. So let's say once you start sending out these emails and you start getting negative reviews, like what do you do? So a lot of people don't do this and a lot of companies, most of the big companies at Amazon all do this. So if you go on some of the top listings, you'll see that if you go through the negative reviews and you see there's usually a comment here. If you click on this comment, uh, the bigger companies will always have someone comment on these negative reviews. So why do you want to comment on these negative reviews? Because you can't, you can no longer identify who are, who's reviewing uh, your products anymore. So the only way you can actually review, uh, respond is through the Amazon review page. So for example, uh, this is like a Seagate product, I think it's a hard drive. Um, so you can see this is kind of what they're writing here. They're basically telling them they're sorry, right? And then they give you like a reason, they give you a way to reach out to them. And some companies, most companies offer full compensation or replacement. And this gives them a, this is actually within TOS. So if you actually read the uh, responding to reviews on the Seller Central Help Guideline, it actually allows you to put in your, um, your phone number or a customer service link, things like that to contact them. So why does this, why is this important? Well, it's not so much that the person that left the review is gonna come back and read it because they're not gonna get a notification that someone responded to it. It's more for prospective customers that are researching your products these days because Top products these days, pretty much all are four and four and a half stars, right? And as a buyer, the smarter buyers, what they do when they shop is they actually go into these products and to distinguish difference, they read the negative reviews and they want to find out what's wrong with this product. Now, if the product has, you know, something fundamentally wrong, that's one issue. But if it's something that's, you know, like, like this hard drive crash and delete all their files and they read that there's a comment on it and the manufacturer wrote that, hey, we're going to, um, you know, send you a free replacement or whatever. That gives you a lot more confidence to buy this product. So this is why you need to respond to it. Um, kind of running short on time. So I'm going to kind of just go through, um, you know, some of these other things. So um, the other things that you want to kind of do these days is monitor your products because things are chaotic right now. There's products that are, you can't sell anymore. There's listings that are no longer FBA. Uh, a lot of listings are getting suppressed. So a lot of the, there's a lot of black hat sellers out there that are actually taking advantage of what's going on right now. So, you know, they're trying to jump on your old listing, sell your products. They're uh, influxing your, your listing with positive reviews and negative reviews. And the reason why they're doing that is um, Amazon now has an algorithm that looks at your review velocity. So if you have too many reviews coming in too quickly, they'll actually suspend your listing. So these are all tactics that, you know, people are doing right now to get you off Amazon. Um, so things like people changing your title, your images, your description, your categories. A lot of sellers are seeing that their products are being changed to adult category. And then because of adult category, it really kills your search results because once you're in adult category, your search results is limited. Um, so what we suggest you do is if you don't have brand registry, definitely get brand registry. It's going to help a lot. It's not going to eliminate all these problems, but at least this gives you a little bit of protection. It can expedite um, some of these issues with Amazon. So definitely recommend you get brand registry if you have it. Um, now quickly talk about how can feedback was help you guys. Well, we can help automate, customize your seller product review emails. We actually monitor listing changes, activities, monitor and manage all your product reviews. And we have a new product and loss uh, tool that's coming out. That's really going to help you guys identify, you know, which products are doing really well. It's, it's pretty much state of the art. It's got you know, all the API data integrated in from all different categories. So you're going to exactly know how much money you're actually making, which 
you know, across all marketplaces and compare different brands and all those kind of things. So um, that's going to come out in a few weeks. Uh, quickly with email automation, uh, you can, you know, you can customize emails, you can make templates, you can put in pictures, you can A-B test, send out specific times, send emails, different type of emails to like repeat buyers or, you know, products that you have promotions for, uh, creating buttons, you know, these are all things we're doing. Uh, we even imported the same review request email that Amazon sends out. So if you guys are scared about getting suspended, you can use your same template, same subject line, automate it with our system as well. And then we're also going to release a review auto automation request uh, tool soon, which doesn't use a Chrome extension. So this, this will actually go through and um, we'll do it on your behalf. So you don't have to use a Chrome extension. You don't have to have your browser open at the same time. Um, and then you can automate and, you know, so this is coming out very shortly. Uh, with product review management, you know, we grab every single review off Amazon. So if you're managing, you know, if you're selling 50 products, obviously you can't manage all the reviews that come in. So we do, you know, th email notifications for, you know, any review rating, um, you know, check keywords, titles. Uh, you can import all these ASINs directly. You can group them. Uh, you can distinguish between reviews and ratings. You can put notes. Uh, reports, you can download everything in a CSV file. So reviews that disappear from Amazon is actually in our database. So you can actually download it and then compare it. And, and if Amazon, there's been a lot of review purges recently, a lot of people don't know. So with our system, we, we have all that data saved. So you can actually go back, download it, reviews that are gone, go back to Amazon. You can tell them, hey, why are these reviews removed? And a lot of times, um, you know, Amazon stores and stuff, they can put it back for a specific reason. So, so these are all things we can do. Uh, with listing alerts, we have, you know, hijack alerts, buy box changes, title changes, item. So all these listing type of activities, we monitor for, uh, every 15 minutes. You can send that, these uh, emails out to, uh, you know, five different email addresses. So for power sellers, I have a lot of listings. Um, this is definitely something you want to have on, especially with all the stuff that's going on right now. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and for more information, please visit feedbackwiz.com.